Yay! Awesome! <laughs> Welcome everybody to this stream all around Azure and today with me with this Mixed Reality with Azure shortener title because we had too much say. <laughs> April prepare us an incredible stream. Welcome April on the stream. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, everyone. <laughs> so April is a cloud advocate just like me, but uh, I will let you introduce yourself and maybe talk a little bit about uh, what you do inside the cloud advocacy team. Yeah, so um, as you mentioned, I am part of the cloud advocacy team. I joined in, was it January or February of this year, I want to say, and I am part of a newer team that we have, which is our spatial computing team. And so we're a smaller group. There's a total of five of us. We all have varied backgrounds and uh, how we got started in this space. But as a cloud advocate, I would say a lot of what my day consists of is creating content around um, developing for Windows Mixed Reality, um, working on different content that will help, uh, for me, primarily beginners get started with this sort of technology because uh, it's not one of those areas where as there's a ton of information out on the internet for you to go find to learn how to get started. So much is still changing to this day. So hoping to keep folks that really want to get started, um, keep them more involved and, and aware of just how they can do that. I primarily do projects and such with our Mixed Reality Toolkit, and I'll share that a bit more um, in the stream. But my my goal here is to help raise awareness around the different tools that we have here at Microsoft. And then occasionally I might just share other tools as well that fall under that mixed reality umbrella. But yeah, I like creating content and helping people see that you too can get started if you're brand new with this, because I only just started last summer. And I think, I think um, next week, I think makes a year since I started working with spatial computing, like as a whole. So that that's that's uh, so it's an hasn't honor been that to long. Be, uh, that yeah. close to that anniversary <laughs> with you. Yes, thank yeah, you, thank boy. you, thank you. It's it's been a journey. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, what a year, right? Yeah, yeah. It's it's been a journey. Um, I I mean, I had to I had to learn two new languages, which I. Uh, hadn't had any real use for in the past. Before I started working with Spatial, I primarily only, actually I only used Python and um, I always focused on AI assistants and chatbots. But now that I'm doing more with Spatial, uh, primarily working in Unity, I do all of my scripting with C Sharp. And um, occasionally if I do anything web-based, then it'll be JavaScript. So with that said, C Sharp and JavaScript were the two new languages I had to learn. But lately I've found myself, when I work with mixed reality, using C Sharp and it's still a learning journey. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. And like you pack so much stuff also in the, like in the, this plan stream when we were talking, I was like, oh, that will be exciting. Like, can, can we pass all through that, all yeah. those things? It will be awesome. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> so maybe we should start then. How yeah, about, so, should it. so should we switch? Blah, blah, blah. That, that's my, uh, you know, when you need to rewind. Yeah. Should we uh, switch scene and uh, see your desktop? Yeah, so let me do that. Mm -hmm. So that's second. on my side. So now we see your beautiful Daisy web desktop. Assuming do you see it now? It's, is it a daisy? No, it's not a daisy. It's it. A, I. You know what? I don't know what that is. If I'm being honest with you, um, it's a flower. <laughs> it's a flower. I know that much. Okay, so can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Wait, I'm not seeing what I'm seeing. Hmm. I see mixed reality. There we capture. go. Here we go. I was a little late where I was viewing. Okay, cool. So what oh, I'm yeah, going to do- Oh yeah, if you're watching from Twitch, there's a delay. Oh, that's a good point. I was like, wait a second. All right, so let me move little Frank here that's in the corner and put you over there. <laughs> and so- <laughs> My little twin. Yes. 
So what I'm going to do is show you all the app that I've been creating um, for HoloLens 2. For those of you who may be wondering what this is, it is um, our latest version of our uh, mixed reality uh, uh, headset device, if you will. Most recently, there was an announcement during Mixed Reality Dev Days that we have picked back up with uh, manufacturing and shipping. So definitely make sure that you check that out if you've been looking for one. I know these are like a hot commodity, but what I'm going to be show showing the app that I created in is Mixed Reality Capture, and that's what you're looking at right now. The app that I created itself um, for HoloLens is to help me with, uh, with strength strengthening my pronunciation of French words. So when the quarantine started, maybe a few days later, I started learning French. And I think I'm at like day 92 or 93 of Duolingo. So I've been pretty consistent. But one thing I've noticed with all my years of language learning is the pronunciation part, because it can be a little hard to ensure that you're saying it correctly. No so kidding. I, you know, which, which yeah, <laughs> you can relate, right? So um, the app itself, um, I like using gameplay and also whenever I create anything in mixed reality, I like it to be an educational experience. And so the, um, the app that I created, it gives you a set of, I can put this down for a second. It gives you a set of flashcards that shows different words. Um, there's a French mode and an English mode. In the French mode, I think that one has all the flashcards are in English and you have to say the proper French word for it. If you get it right, then the card turns green and the score increases. And then for the English mode, it's the inverse. All the cards are in French and you have to say their English equivalent. And if you say it correct, then you get points. So so I am going to share this right now through our mixed reality capture. If you have a HoloLens device, this is a great way for you to um, to show what you're actually seeing in your device. And this is also where you can come and actually grab anything that gets stored on your device, such as um, pictures, any uh, video captures, and you can also come here and install apps. So let me put it on one second. So you would be happy to know that uh, I took the screenshot to share on Twitter before you put all your headset <laughs> so we can recognize you. Thank you, thank you. All right, so here we are. You should be able to see what I see in my HoloLens. Yeah, that's cool. Perfect, all right. So I have it here in my all apps. I call it Practice French. And um, as I've been like sharing on Twitter about this, and also for you all who are just seeing this for the first time, this is the very first game, if you will, that I created on a HoloLens. So this was a brand new experience for me. So there's some things I'm still learning and figuring out. Um, distance is one of them because for some reason I put these buttons like right where my head was. So when you first start the <laughs> when you first start the app, you have two modes. One is English, as I mentioned. The other one is French. In a real app, if you will, there would be instructions or probably be like a title card here and such. But for now, from a functionality standpoint, um, I'll just show you just the areas around it. So from here, because with HoloLens, you can use your hands to, um, to select the holograms and buttons and such, I can click start French mode. And then as you can see here, I have the um, actual interface itself. So in this one, I have the title here that says to say the word in French. I have my score that's there. I have two buttons, one that'll take me back to the main menu. One's a restart button to restart this scene. Um, I have my flashcards that I mentioned here. As you can see, you'll notice that there's a button underneath each one. And that button is what you can use to, um, to use the microphone to record your saying. Over here on the right, I have my time that's counting down. And so I haven't figured out how to make the time start by pressing a start button. It just starts when the scene starts. So I'll figure that out eventually. But for now, what I will do is click restart game so we can get, oh, it moved. Okay, didn't expect that. Let's, <laughs> let's restart there. Let me back up a bit. Time's going down. So I'll start here with yes, and I'll say the word in French, oui. Turns green, dog, chien, oops, 
Shion. Yay. Amuzant. Amusant. Yay. Femme. Intelligent. And notice my score is at a 50 now. You get 10 points every time you get one correct. Bienvenue. That one was pretty good. Cheval. Chouette. Oh, all you put it at chouette? Okay. Yeah. Chouette is the yeah. female of a uh, all. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, and uh, the, the male will be uh, ibu. Oh, that's good to know. Um, so here, now that my score has went down, I see that the game's over, I get a pop-up. It gives me what that total score is as well. And then from here, I can go back to the main menu. Again, since I haven't got my uh, <laughs> distance working well, it keeps getting closer to me. So let me restart it so we can just see the, see the English mode really quick. Yeah. And we put it um, at a more proper distance. It's really cool. Thank you. I also learned something new today about male owls. I had no clue. <laughs> and I know in Russian, like I, like I will tell you, I don't want to say it right now, but uh, because mm -hmm. I was uh, managing a, a team of people talking Russian and mm -hmm. uh, with the word ibu in it, word ibu in it, the sentence, it could be very inappropriate. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I learned that. That too. is good to know. <laughs> yeah, so I will let you know that's and it's not on the not where we're live though. Yeah. Oh, that's good to know. Yeah, my team uh, had a we'll lot of fun. They made me uh, say that sentence in French, and was like, "What's the problem with that?" And they were laughing and said, "If you could imagine what you're saying right now," I was like, "Okay, let's not repeat Aww. that." Oh. Oh. Um, we'll look at the English mode. That one's, um, we get the words in French now, and we just say the English equivalent, so we'll start with we. Yes. Dog. Oh, that was right. Funny. Get back to this one. Dog. It picked up what I said afterwards. Uh, welcome. Oh, can, uh, so uh, April. Oh, do you have a time? Is there a? I'm at twenty. I'm at twenty-three seconds. Okay, I'll let you go then. Okay, almost done. After. Wife. Horse. Owl. Girl. Just like you promised. House. Yeah, I told you it was gonna happen. <laughs> oh, okay. So game over. I got a 90 that time. So let me get on out of here and then let me get back to my face on the screen. Let me get out of that mixed reality awesome. capture. Really, really cool. And the uh, response <laughs> time, it's, kind of, it's quick. I was yeah. expecting like, you know, a long delay between you saying something and like the validation. Mm -hmm. One second, Frank. Sorry. One second. Uh. Ah. Okay, you were saying you were. Oh, I see now everything's upside down. <laughs> Sorry about that, everyone. I you were hopefully, saying. Hopefully, hopefully nobody throw up. <laughs> 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 I was saying I was very impressed by the speed. I was expecting a delay mm. between while well, you're yeah. saying something and like yeah. you know, like that thing need to be analyzed and everything, and the response that was yeah. quick. I oh, know. Yeah. So while you were, I uh, just want to open a little parenthesis here because a lot of things are happening on the chat. Mm -hmm. uh, so we got raided. So by a Visual Studio team, raid with uh, 55 uh, viewers. So that's that's cool. So I was like, I, I was about to ask you, hey, could you say welcome, but in French for for, for them? Oh, I can say bonjour, bienvenue. Uh, bonjour, bienvenue. <laughs> Hi, welcome Raiders, so super nice to see you. So people were very appreciated. We already have questions, so do you want me to push the, uh, mention the question as we go or you prefer keeping it at a certain point or how do you... Uh, um, you can, honestly, I work best if you just say the questions as they pop up. Okay. Um, yep. So we had uh, Frank S was asking, how about a wrong pronunciation? Any signal? Yeah, so you, um, when I tried 
uh, trying to add logic in there to check for the incorrect pronunciation, I realized that I was going to have to dedicate way more time to building this out than um, than I had at the moment when I was creating it. There is logic that you can add to it as well um, to check for that. Because I am using our uh, speech to text service, essentially what it's doing, and I can get into that a little long, a little later. Essentially, what it's doing is checking. Um, it's it's taking uh, an utterance, so whatever speech that is, and then it's translating that into text. And so therefore, if I'm supposed to say bonjour, but instead I say like bonjour, it'll tell me that it doesn't recognize that particular phrase, unless that happens to be a real phrase in French, of course. But otherwise, um, it does give you a, uh, the way the logic is set up, at least in my, in my script, it does give you a string to let you know that there's no match. If you want something that's a bit more uh, intricate in terms of detail um, around like what was pronounced incorrectly, I'm sure this there's things you can add to the script to do that as well. For what I was creating, I just wanted something that was much more high level on the surface <laughs> of checking whether or not the words match. But um, there, there are there is some additional logic you can add to it as well. But it totally works because, yes, like the you know the pronunciation was not perfect on certain like being 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 very picky. But uh, I. I I can understand everything you said. Like every word was like, yeah, she's like, it's 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 a, it's a valid green, <laughs> right? Good, good. Yeah, that means yeah. our products work. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Which is Your definitely game good. Works, so let's yeah sell it. Um, yes. So okay. So blah blah blah. Um, so okay. So another one uh, from uh, Bel Dahaz was, mm -hmm. does it handle? shuddering stuttering oh stuttering um so the way that our uh our speech service is designed if i'm not mistaken it does for the one that i'm using i think it takes just a shorter utterance if you are stuttering what it will tr attempt to do is make out the 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 word itself that you are attempting to say um I know for a fact that it doesn't account for filler words like ums and uh, and like us. Uh. I've tested that out with something else that I've built. So if you were to say a sentence that said, um, my name is April, uh, I like coding, the response would take out that um and that uh. But for something that's stuttering, my assumption would be that it would look for that word, that, that the full saying of whatever that word is that the speaker is attempting to say. But that might also be something that's worth looking um, more into with our cognitive services team, just to double check. But I do know for a fact that ums and uhs do not um, are not picked up. Oh, that's nice. And, and yeah. I translate Google uh, Google Translate because I didn't know that word, but now I know. Oh, Shuttering. Okay. I was like, what is it? <laughs> Before yeah. asking, I will Google it if it's like if it's me or if it's a tech term. But it was not the tech term. <laughs> Yeah, I think growing up, um, I had like a slight stutter, but that was because I talked fast. And so as I got older, I learned to slow down yeah. to avoid having I, stutters. It still happens, but. <laughs> Big Emma, exactly. Thank you. That's what I, I didn't know that word. So see, I learn every day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I awesome. like learning. <laughs> and yeah, people were mentioning that we got a delay, but uh, remember that she was sharing that and then through a Skype call and then I'm streaming that. So that's why we had a little delay. So between when you press the virtual button and when you mm -hmm. record your voice, for oh. us, it was a little bit like you were saying the word and then pressing the recording button. So we had a little bit delay, but is that just that just because we're streaming kind of twice? I'm assuming for yeah, you, it's yeah. like it's it's in the real real uh, sequence, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, and um, I'm sure towards the end of the of the of the show, um, or even here for Bogan Code, my 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 Twitter handle is right below my picture. If you go to my um, to my feed on my Twitter, I actually posted a video of me doing this as well in real time. So if you want to see it done in real time where everything syncs up, you can definitely find the uh, the, the the tweet that I had showing it so you can see how it does match up but yeah i think it's because we're streaming a stream of a stream <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a it's in inceptions yeah that's pretty much what it is inceptions. well it was a very cool demo so um thank you can you show ready us, to get started uh, to show yeah. how to make it yeah <laughs> it, it definitely takes some work 
All right, so let me start you off. I explained how you can, um, how it actually works in itself. And the first thing that you'll need to do when you're creating this is actually starting with Unity. So I have Unity open in my background, but for those of you who may have never used Unity, I'm just gonna open up the Unity Hub really quick so you can just see how, um, the settings that I had here, and then we'll head to the actual project that I have ready for us to use. So what you'll want to do is um, in the Unity Hub, you can go to new, click the drop down. I'm using version 2019.3.14 F1. And so I know it works on this version. Therefore, if you wanna replicate this on your own, I would say you can't go wrong using that version of Unity. Once you've selected that version of Unity, you will want to find a folder where you wanna just store it. I personally on my computer have a folder of all my Unity projects just to keep everything organized. I'm a super organized person. And so that's my location. And then the project, call it whatever you want. Just know that um, that'll be what it's called if you deploy it to like, in my case, a HoloLens. So once you've done that, Unity will take a moment to create the new project. As I mentioned, I already have it open, so we're just going to head to Unity here. Once you have Unity open, um, in here, there's some settings that you need to do to uh, configure your project for Windows Mixed Reality. Now. When you're getting started with Windows Mixed Reality, there's a lot of tools um, and steps that you need to take. The first thing is going to be installing the tools itself. And so Frank, if you don't mind, if you could share the, do, 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 do. where is it? Getting started with MR. Oh no, it's nope. actually a couple ones now. Uh, AKA.ms slash Mixed Reality Tools. Okay. That MS slash mixed reality tools. I don't have that one. Do I you have, see? I have, uh, I have HL2 tutorial and HL2 import. And right below it, what do you have? That's it. I have a guess, April. <laughs> oh, you don't see the other ones? No. Nope. Oh. Did oh, no. you share me? Oh, like, you know what? Do you have it, uh, Andy, on your side? Just send it to me to uh, to the chat. Yeah, and I, will, I, will, I can do that. I will um, show you my second. skills and copy paste Let it in me. the Twitch chat. No problem. And of Let course, me. I will add them. So if you're watching on YouTube, it will be down below. Reality tools. Make sure I spelled reality right. <laughs> All right, that's that. That's the first one. Oh yeah, I didn't have that one. Oh yeah, there should be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Whoa. Okay, I missed some. Yeah. Okay, maybe I need to dig in my emails. Uh, where is the chat? There. Boom. All right. Voila. Perfect. Thank you. Yay. I will look around. All right. So um, this web page will actually get you to all the tools that you'll need to install. And I don't need to install any because I work on this on a day to day. However, here is a checklist that I think is super helpful. Make sure that you refer to this if you're wondering what even needs to be installed um, beyond just installing Unity. There, um, you will be using Visual Studio for this and um, make sure you, that you have the Windows 10 SDK, that's super helpful but also that you have the most recent version of Windows 10. So those are the tools that you'll want to install. So once you have ensured you've had those, then here in Unity, you can configure your project for Windows Mixed Reality. The first thing that you'll wanna do is come in the file, build settings, and then in here, you're going to wanna to switch to the universal Windows platform. And once you are in there, um, Typically this button down here will say switch because I've already switched. I don't need to do that again. But um, once it switches, then this will be the active one. You don't need to change any of the settings in here if you are um, building for, in my case, a HoloLens too. Once this has been switched, you'll come to player settings. And then once you're here in player settings, there's a couple things in here you need to do. You are going to go to player and then XR settings you're going to check that virtual reality is supported. And then from here, you will add the Windows Mixed Reality for the virtual reality SDKs by clicking this plus button here. Once you've done that, then you'll have these options for depth format 
and you'll want to set that to 16-bit depth and then enable depth buffer render buffer sharing to um, make sure that's checked. And then studio rendering mode is going to be single pass instance. Whew, that was a lot. It was a mouthful. Um, so. <laughs> and by the way, I found all your links. Oh, okay, cool. Um, so yeah, so for this project, that's really all you need to do here in the project settings. If you were building for something else, there's many more things you can change in here, but for this project, we're doing the bare minimum of what needs to be changed. So once you've done that, you can just click X. Um, for those of you who may use Unity frequently, you know that there are no save buttons really in here, except for when you save a scene. So once you change stuff, you just click the X because it's saved. Once you've done that, what you now need to do is import um, Text Mesh uh, Pro, and that's going to be used when we create any text U UI. So here at Window, you'll come to Text Mesh Pro and then import um, TMP Essential Resources. Once that gets imported, the next thing that you'll want to import is the Mixed Reality Toolkit. I'll go over what that is in more details in a bit, but the way that you import that it will also be by coming to um, to assets, import package, custom package, and you'll navigate to wherever you may have it on your computer. So we will get into the mixed reality toolkit in a second, but with regards to the regular, um, for the regular just configuration to get ready for Windows mixed reality, that's what you need to do just up to the MRTK part. Now. For those of you who may be thinking this is a heck of a lot of things <laughs> to set up, I completely understand. But the good news is that we have um, documentation for this. And Frank, if you could share the... Um, Do that you have some numbers on that, like note to yeah. myself. <laughs> <laughs> share link number five. Right. I, I should have numbered them. If you can share the aka.ms slash hl2 tutorials link. Oh, yeah, I have that one. That was the second one. Yep. So on that particular page, as soon as I can find it, I believe it looks like this one. Um, what this page will do is take you to the HoloLens 2 tutorials that we have over on Docs. And this will actually walk you through what I just showed you probably super quickly on Unity, but this is more of a step-by-step -step approach. Uh, it outlines what those prerequisites are. So this does reference that tools link that we just talked about. And then here on page two for initializing your project and first application, this is literally everything I just went through. So if you are more of a, you need to see pictures and you need to walk step by step and you need screenshots and so on and so forth, then check out this document because it'll do the same exact things that, um, that I just walked you through over on Unity just super quickly. The next thing we're going to do now is um, add MRTK to the project and configure. And so this documentation also has this as well. Now, if you've never used MRTK, MRTK is a mixed reality toolkit. And we have documentation for what that is as well, but the mixed reality toolkit is um, really, really helpful if you're building mixed reality experiences. You can also use for um, for a virtual reality and augmented reality. So you, you can get pretty good use out of it. There are a lot of scripts that come with it, a lot of prefabs that come with it. Um, scripts, if you're not familiar with those are, they're gonna be um, essentially the C-sharp code um, that you can use to add functionality to your app. And then prefabs are going to be what in Unity you can refer to as game objects that you can use um, over and over again without having to create new objects with a bunch of configurations. Essentially, the prefabs have all the configurations on them that you might need. So MRTK is super helpful. Um, and there are instructions here in documentation for how to get started with that. Frank, if you could share the getting started with MRTK link for everyone at home. The import, right, you said? The very first one, getting started with MRTK. Oh, yeah. Yep. So that'll take you here to this page that I'm currently on right now. And this is where um, you can learn more about MRTK. More important, this is where you can come and actually download the package. And so on the documentation, it says where you can get the latest MRTK Unity packages for what you do on a day to day basis, for example, um, of just building. You only need that foundation package. And that's the only one that I'm importing into what we're building today. And 
there's a link here that says to go to the MRTK release page. And then on there is where you can get the packages from. So keep that in a safe space. I mentioned earlier, I have a Unity folder where I keep all my Unity stuff. In that folder, I have a packages folder and that's where I keep all my packages. So that way I don't have to go back to websites and re-download them ever again, unless they get upgrades, of course. So make sure that you go there to get that. And then now, Frank, you can share the the other one, the import. Um, okay. You keep yeah. me busy, yeah? <laughs> I gotta keep you on your toes. <laughs> so for that one is um, importing, is that's what I just said, right? So, oh, now I'm forgetting what that link looks like, but that one should take you here, yeah. And I think so, let me see. Now I forgot where that link goes to, one second. Okay, that MS slash HL. It's, uh, it's a two initializing your project and first application. Oh, I was in the right place. Okay, cool. Thank you. So yeah, this is that page. And then as you come down, as I mentioned earlier, there is that mixed reality uh, toolkit area, which is right here. And these are the instructions for how you can get the mixed reality toolkit um, into your project. So you can follow those instructions. I'm just going to quickly walk you through that on the screen though, here in Unity. And I already have it, so I don't need to re-add it, but you would go to assets, import package, custom package. And then from there, you'll get a file explorer window that'll pop up, search for wherever you have or navigate where you have it installed and, or where you have it saved. And then once you find that, import everything in there. And then now we're at the point where we're here in the, in the actual Unity scene and we're gonna do everything else here on camera. So the first thing that you'll do um, is you're gonna need to add it to your project. You'll notice here that it's been added to the menu. Before it wasn't there, now it's here because we added it. You'll click Mixed Reality Toolkit and then you're gonna click Add to Scene and Configure. Over here in the hierarchy, you'll see that it's been added. Uh, typically, or just really always, whenever Unity starts a new project, the directional light object and the camera object are added by default. When you add in the Mixed Reality Toolkit, we're actually taking that camera and we're placing it inside one of these two objects. So it's not that the camera's gone, we, we just move it inside one of these, um, one of these uh, parent objects, if you will. Mm -hmm. Let me switch to the scene view, there we go. All right, so once you have that in here, let me make sure I'm at the right next place. We're going to set some configuration profiles. And so in Unity, we, or I guess with Mixed Rally Toolkit, we have configuration profiles that have been created to help with uh, configuring settings based on what you're building for. So I'm building for HoloLens 2. And if you come um, to the Mixed Rally Toolkit object and then here, this, will, this is where you can find the configuration profiles. If you click that drop down, as you can see, we have six different options to choose from. By default, we um, we set it as the default Mixed Rally Toolkit configuration profile, but we also have ones for HoloLens 1, HoloLens 2, Leap Motion, and then XR SDK C, or XR SDK. <laughs> so you have some options um, as well. What we suggest to do is to find a profile that's as close to whatever you're building for. Um, I think the obvious here is that um, if, you're, if, you're, if you're creating for a different platform, these aren't gonna be a 100% match for exactly whatever configurations you need. But if they pretty much meet um, most of what you need, but there's some changes that need to be made, no fear, select it because you can change the profiles by cloning them. So I'm actually gonna have to do that for what we're creating today. So since I use the HoloLens 2, I'll switch to the HoloLens 2 configuration profile. Notice here in my game view, it's now black before I had the, the similar look that we see here in scene, but for the HoloLens 2, um, it's gonna have you this, this black game background. Um, now, once you have the device on, um, you don't see black because you can't see black with the device at all, actually. Um, typically, it's like a super duper dark, like gray color. But um, so this will change that background to black. And then 
for this particular project that I'm creating, what we need to do is disable the microphone from starting automatically. So if you have or haven't used the HoloLens 2 before, um, it comes with Cortana and uh, Cortana is our voice assistant that we have with our, um, our Microsoft products, if you will. So she does come with the HoloLens and you can use voice to interact with her which is super helpful, but if you're building an app that also uses voice, it's not the most helpful because you wanna ensure that the mic is only starting when you need it to and not necessarily on at all times, whereas Cortana could pick up and um, whatever you're saying and then it takes away from the functionality. So with that said, we're some, there's some settings we need to change in the configuration profile for that. So since I have this HoloLens 2 one here, one thing that I mentioned earlier is that you have to clone it. You can't um, come in here and change our default settings, uh, but you have you can clone them and then you can manipulate the clone to your liking. So by cloning, you'll click this clone button. You'll get a pop-up that says clone profile. You can give it a new name. You can change, you can decide where you want to save it. I usually just leave it at whatever profile name it gives me. And then I click clone. And then once I do that, um, I don't know what just happened up there that that just moved. Oh. There we go. So now it's been cloned and down here, I can actually change um, settings now before I couldn't do anything. Yeah. And so what we need to do is find where the mic is and that's gonna be an input. So here I clicked on the input. Now I have the input settings. Notice that they're grayed out because um, again, you can't change our default profiles, but in here there's a profile within a profile. So you would click clone, same as I said before, clone it and now I have access to the input system settings. And then towards the bottom, we have one that says speech. And then in here, as uh, you could probably guessed it, you'll clone that one again. And now once you've cloned that, you have access to come in here and change these settings. And what we need to do is change the start behavior. And so we're gonna make that manual. So now the, the microphone itself will start when we manually start it. The other thing I'm going to change in here, um, just because I find it to be, um, it gets in the way when I'm demoing how to do something, but I would suggest keeping it enabled if you are um, building something actively, it's going to be the diagnostics toolbar. So before I get rid of it, I'll show you what that even looks like. And I promise we will start building the app in a second. There's just setup that you have to do. <laughs> well, I know you're probably wondering, like, this is a lot. <laughs> well, like, you know, now it's recorded so we can watch it. Yeah, exactly. 30, 30, 30, uh, 33 times if we want. Exactly. So uh, what you see here is oh, the diagnostics. Just wait a second and we'll remove my picture because I'm hiding oh. what you're showing. I you know think. what? Let me move it up. Zoom. Um, I don't know if I can. Oh, I I'm can't. Fine. I just disappear. You're fine. Okay, no problem. All right. So that's a diagnostics toolbar. Um, the reason why I say I like to get rid of it when I'm showing a demo of something is because it can start blocking holograms and then you can't see it. But if you are building something and you're iterating over it, definitely keep this um, keep this active so you can just see how the performance is of your app. But I just wanted to just show that um, before I remove it so you're not just wondering like, what did she remove? <laughs> <laughs> so um, you can show your face again, Frank, you can come back. Well, people were and... happy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, so um, to disable that, we have a diagnostics area here, and then I can uncheck enable diagnostic system, and now that'll be gone when we press play again. So the moment you all have been waiting for is to now get started with building this because our project is now all set and ready to get started. So the first thing I'm gonna do is create my scenes. And if at any point I need to make something in terms of like, give something a little bit more real estate on the screen, just let me know. Um, I don't think I can zoom in on Unity, but I can try to move some things around and make screens a little oh, bigger should, as best as I, I can. Should, yeah, I could. I should have, uh, I use a uh, zoom it. It's a uh, little tool, you could need to get that. control one and uh, it's zoom whatever yeah. you want. You could pause and then draw on it. I will share with oh, that with you after. That. You could do, yeah, do natively do also on uh, Windows, I think with, uh, the Windows key and then plus, but then I'm mm. always, I, I use a 60% keyboard, so I'm always yeah. getting stuck to getting out of that mode after. So that's uh, why I kind of, I'm using my little tool with control one. 
Yeah, yeah. I think I yeah, I think I tried that with the Windows key and plus once while in Unity. And then all of a sudden my Internet Explorer or my um not Internet Explorer, my um Edge interface got all weird. I don't know how oh. the two were connected. So uh share share with me the tools you use yeah, um later so that way I can uh I can I can give those a try. I also have one of those special keyboards so who knows what might be <laughs> configured as what. <laughs> hey, have you seen my keyboard while I'm here? No. Nah. Oh. nice. Oh, that's it's cool. Beautiful. I think uh, just yeah. uh, just wait a second. Oh. I will I will move you in a bigger uh, so we can all enjoy your show it again. There we go. Wow, it looks like um. I'm always told like lipsticks. Yeah. <laughs> like a, like you know, a sampler of lipstick, and then like if someone just like chop them. Yeah. That's super yep. cool. <laughs> Oh, well, now, now mine you. look uh, not sexy at all. <laughs> <laughs> mine is like this. Oh, I like it though. It's like that, but then like, people saying like, oh, like no, nothing. No, no, I'm a cheater because I have all the, uh, like, the, the letters are on the, on the side. Gotcha. I like yours though. I like the colors. Blue is my favorite color. Yeah, I like so. <laughs> Alrighty, so um, the first thing that I am going to do is add the scenes for this. So this particular app, if you will, has three different scenes. You have a main menu, you have a French mode and an English mode. And so here in assets, we're going to come to um, our scenes folder. And honestly, let's save the scene that we have open already as one of the scenes. We can go to save as and then let me navigate over to scenes and we're gonna call this main menu. Uh, let me keep it all as one word. All right, so we have one scenes down. We need to now um, create two oh, more. Wait, sorry, I, I, I was uh, all reading the chat. People love your keyboards. I will, oh, I will put you. back your, your, uh, your, sc your screen. Oh, thank that you. That was on me. <laughs> like, oh my God, that keyboard. People love the, the, the keyboards. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Sorry about that. Um, so what I just did on the screen for you all, because I need to create another one, so I'll, I'll walk through when I do the next one, but is uh, creating scenes and saving them. So, so far I've saved this scene and called it main menu. And then what we need to do is create another scene and we can go to new scene. Notice that everything looks like it's brand new again. That's because it's a whole new scene. We're gonna add Mixed Reality Toolkit. And since we already created profiles that has all those settings, what we need to do is come to the drop down, and then we need to, huh, I thought they'd be here. Let me see. I might be wrong. We'll just set them again. Take you off, go to input, should be one. Here it is. Yep. So every time you create a new scene, you will need to go back and um, reconfigure each scene for the correct uh, configuration profile, just a heads up. So the second scene we're created, we're gonna call this one French mode. Save that in scenes. Oops, I'm not typing. All right, and then we need one more new scene, and we're gonna do the same thing we just did. So, oh no, they were up here. I just missed it when I looked at it earlier. Um, input, let me see where I am. Okay, so this seems to be right, and okay, cool. All right, so we're gonna save this one as English mode. All right, and then we're gonna go back over to the main menu. And we can do that by coming to assets to our scenes folder and just click on that and that'll open the main menu back up. Now, for each scene, you need to be able to switch back and forth to all of them. The only way you can do that in Unity when you are in play mode is to have all the scenes added um, to your build. So over on file, you'll come to build settings. And at the top here where we say, where we have scenes and build, you're going to add the open scene, which in this case is main menu. And then you're gonna go to French and you're gonna do the same thing. 
add open scene. So now it adds it as number two. And then you're going to go to English and add that to this scene. All right. Now we head back over to the main menu. And as you saw in the demo that I did earlier, if you may have missed it, there's two buttons. Um, and each of those buttons um, will take you to one of the two different modes. So in the main menu, what we need to do is add a button for each of those options. Now, as I mentioned earlier with the Mixed Reality Toolkit, there are prefabs available that you can use so that way you don't have to create these objects from scratch. We're gonna add some buttons. And so if I head back over to the Mixed Reality site. You don't have to share this uh, this link, Frank, because I gave the link to the main site already, but I will just direct people where they can go to find it. In feature overviews, there are some UX building blocks. And then if you click on button, that's where you can get the, the buttons um, or view the buttons that we have with the Mixed Reality Toolkit. And there's instructions on how you can um, use them, create your own custom buttons. But the reason that I'm here is just to show you what they look like. Um, in Unity, you can also see what they look like as well. We do have some checkboxes, some uh, toggles as well. We even have um, some HoloLens 1 style, for example. We have pressable buttons. So we have a lot of buttons, basically, that you can use. Now, where are those buttons? They're going to be in the folder path that we see here in documentation. And I'm going to navigate to that um, and use my memory to make sure that I go to the right place. <laughs> so you could always search for them. But if you go to MRTK and if you were to go to SDK, features, UX, prefabs, I want to say, and I always get this wrong. Let me see. Oh, I missed a place. UX interactable prefabs. I was almost there. Interactable and then prefabs. And here are all the buttons. Um, in my view, I like to just see the names of them. But if you do scroll this over, you can actually see what they look like. And I am going to use, there's a HoloLens 2 style that's like a longer rectangle. And so that's the one that I'm going to use. If we turn that around, you can see it there. So for this one, I am going to drag it. Where'd it go? I'm going to drag. Yeah, you had a question? Yeah, oh, sorry. <laughs> no, you're fine. I should have like a ding. Um, so we have a question from ZadDuck100. Mm -hmm. uh, the setup seemed pretty straightforward and detailed, but uh, can we have custom UI within the Mixed Reality Toolkit? Mm, if possible, could you give me a little more um, explanation exactly of, of what of what that would entail. I wanna make sure I answer that correctly. So I'll- um, Just continue, we'll let you know. Yeah, let, let me know. And then I'll, I'll get to that as fast as I can. Um, so now that we have this button, I'm just gonna drag it here into the scene. And if it's highlighted, if you put your cursor over here on the uh, scene view, click F on your keyboard, it'll take you right to it. And I'm gonna just turn it around so we can actually look at it. So here's our first button. And you might be noticing that you don't see it in the game view. That's because um, your headset is placed, or the camera is placed at origin, which is going to be zero, zero, zero. And at the moment, um, this button is on the Z axis, which means your this button is basically sitting in your head if you have on the device. So what we need to do is push that back a little bit. What I would first suggest doing is resetting the transform first to make sure everything's at zero, zero, zero. And then let me, bring that over so that's even. And then here on the Z axis, I like to set things at a 0.5. And as you can see now, we can see it down here in the game view. And I'm not yep. even hiding it. <laughs> so perfect. Um, oh, like built up from a Figma or a design tool. Um, that is a good question. I'm not 100% sure. Um, that would be something though that I would probably have to ask the Mixed Reality team to be 100% honest with you with regards to if the Mixed Reality Toolkit, um, could you have a custom UI within the Mixed Reality Toolkit? Um, well, I'm assuming, feel free, uh, ZadDuck100, yeah. to ask. You see her uh, April Twitter just under uh, her video feed. Just ask her on Twitter and she will make sure to ask and let you know or something like that. Yeah. Um, so we have this first button and then let me just 
zoom in on it so we can see it. And so this particular first button, we need it to say, um, we need to add a label to it. Right now, it just says button title label, label. And as I mentioned before, with our prefabs, we have scripts attached to it. We have all the configurations you could ever need. We have sounds attached to it. So that way, if the user presses it, it'll make a noise. So you don't have to actually worry about accounting for that on your own, but you're more than welcome to switch that out. One thing we're going to switch out is what the label actually says. So for this first one, um, we have this button config helper and that's brand new if i'm not mistaken with the mixed reality toolkit this is where we'll come and we'll rename it and this one's going to say um english mode and then that say button we're actually not going to use this in this game but what um what you can use that for are speech commands because you don't have to use your hands to press buttons um or just interact with buttons if you will you can also use uh, voice as well but we're not going to configure that for this particular um project the other thing that i will change is going to be the icon um instead of having that that um that bounding box cube, which is what you see there now. I'm gonna put the little hand symbol just to indicate that you press this. So now that we've done that, we can duplicate it by doing uh, control D. We have a second one. And the second one, we want to name that one uh, French mode. But before we do that, one thing I will do is just spread them out and rename. So the first one is English mode. Second one is French mode, and this will just help me know what's what. French mode, we are going to spread on the X axis to the right a little bit. Uh, come on back. And we got to change the name of it still to say French. And then English will make this one on the right. There we go. And so French mode, again, you can come in here, rename it to French mode. And we'll change the, oh, the icon's already correct. So we have two buttons, one say French mode, one says English mode. Now we need to add some functionality to them so that way we can get back and forth to all the different, um, all of the different scenes. But I think what I will do is, cause I'm looking at where we are in time. I'll add in the button functionality to switch between all the different screens um, after we get through the French scene first. So you can see how you can switch back and forth because we're here for Azure. So let's look at the Azure component. But from the main menu, this is how you'll come in and add those buttons. So we're gonna work on the French mode and let's save this scene and we'll hop over to the French mode. Let me go to my scenes and do that. All right, so in here, notice we don't have anything in this French scene because we haven't added anything yet, um, but we are about to add everything in here. So as you're creating this, what I was just doing is doing one first and then apply to all the other ones. Um, I had a lot of trial and error with creating this, and so I found that to be the best way to go about doing this. Um, what we'll be using is the Azure speech to text. And so that is, um, if you ever want to see more about it, we do have documentation over on our, um, within our, uh, docs on Azure speech attacks. I don't have a, a link for you to share for this one, Frank, but one thing I wanted to show is that if anyone wants to just test it out, um, we do have the ability for you to do that in the browser without having to pull it over into whatever it is that you're building. So we do have languages that you can try out as well and you speak and we'll give you the uh, transcription from speech to text. So that's just a FYI if you wanna try it out. And here, the first thing that I need to do is I guess explain how Azure speech to text even works in this game. What I am doing is um, I'm having the microphone pick up whatever that utterance is. And then that utterance goes to Azure in the cloud. And then Azure then takes that utterance and transcribes it to text. And then what we get back will be a string, for example. And then in my particular game, what I am doing is validating that that string that's returned is equal to whatever string I set in the Unity editor for whatever the French yeah. word is. So that's how it's working. Um, there's other ways you can incorporate this into whatever you're building as well. But in this particular um, experience, that's what I'm doing. So the first thing that I would do is create that flashcard. Um, 
that I had mentioned. And I like to keep, since I know I need like a bunch of them, I think it's 12, I like to keep them all organized in one uh, folder. So the first thing I would do is create an empty game object and name this one flashcards. And you'll reset this one at origin and you can put it uh, 0.5 back. You can't see anything because it's empty. So there's nothing right there right now. But what we will do is add some children to it. Now my flashcards are made out of Unity primitives and the Unity primitives are going to be the different 3D objects that comes with Unity. In my case, I use a cube. So what I'll do is come into flashcards and I'll right click 3D object and cube. And right now you can't see it and the reason being is that one, it's at origin, and then two, it's massive right now. So if I were to just push that back, for example, now you can see it, but it's too big. Um, keep in mind that with Unity, these dimensions are in meters, so that's gonna be a pretty big cube. I like to break them down to about a 0.25 um, for, uh, for, for the sake of what I'm usually building if I'm testing something. I think for this one though, I, um, I think, yeah, I left them about this size. The default and is in meter, you said? Yeah. So one is like a, a one meter and okay, wow. So mm -hmm. like if you're going in details and stuff, like it must be super tiny little numbers. Yeah, you'll have to get smaller. And so for what I, the ones that I did, I think, because usually my, my, the one I pick, I usually go with for scale is a, is, um, is a 0.25, so that it gets it significantly smaller to that size that you saw. But one time I had created um, like Saturn, a Saturn, like the, the planet model, brought it into Unity, didn't change the scale. And as soon as I put on the device, it was like <laughs> massive. <laughs> Because I never changed the scale, so keep keep that in mind if you're working with something. Well, I'm sure it was uh, smaller than the real Saturn, though. Smaller than the real Saturn, yeah, definitely smaller than the real one. Um, so now that we have that, the other thing that we need to do is make it a little thinner because um, we wanted to like a card. So even though 0.25 is like my default scale size, I like to make it a little longer so we have a little more space, like a rectangle. Um, we'll keep it in terms of the height where it is, but the Z axis, if I turn this and move the camera over, where's my mouse? You'll see here, this is what it looks like from the side. We need that to be thinner. So you can bring in that Z axis, oops, other direction, maybe. Yep, till the point that it's thin. I'm not good at this, doing it that way. There we go, that's thin enough. So now that we have that, um, let's add some color and then let's add some Azure. So the first thing for color, um, just like as we have prefabs with MRTK, we also have some standard materials. Materials are gonna be the colors that you can add. And so in this case, um, I can type in standard, I think it's MRTK standard if I search for it. Yeah, oops, if I can spell standard, there they are. So as you can see here, I have some colors and I chose blue when I did mine. So I can just drag that to uh, the cube and now I have a blue cube. So the cube's all set and good to go. The next thing that we need to do is add a canvas so we can add some um, some text to it. And that's gonna be where that card um, where the, the text for the flashcard is. So what I would suggest doing from here is creating a UI text, uh, text with TextMesh Pro. And that gets, creates the um, canvas by default. And then you'll also get this uh, text object as well. And so right now, um, by default, it says new text, you'll wanna change this. Now, when I was finding French words, um, I actually have a notebook where I was keeping all my French words. I wanna know where I put it. I thought I had it right here ready for me to show and tell, and I know I can't find it. Oh, here it's here. <laughs> so I had this notebook and it's full of like French words from when I started learning on Duolingo. And so this is what I consulted for figuring out like what to use. So if you, um, if you're doing French in my case, uh, if you know some French words, great. For this one, we'll do Maison, which would be house. The intention here would be that you would have to say it. Mm, no, let's do it the other way. Let's put house and then the user has to say Maison. So now that says house. Notice that we can't see it up there. Um, 
forgot I need to convert this to MRTK Canvas. I'm probably going to hate that I just did that, but I know that there's some settings I need to change. So bear with me on this because this part I'm not really good at. My sense of direction is not the best with uh, I found with, your like, sound distance. of direction. Oh, in, in <laughs> that tool at least, because like there's a lot of menu and option and drop downs and the text box. Yeah. And... Oh, and I think I just messed up one of them. I oh, know that's right. And then this, I need to reduce the font. And I go put one. Anybody in the I chat know. to already play with the uh, Unity uh, toolings? Just by curiosity? If so, yeah. yeah, if so, definitely let me know your tips or tricks because this is my least favorite part. Um, Let's see, where is this? Okay, it's far. Okay, you might have to do a little cheating because this is the part that I don't like too much. Um, canvas, let me convert to Unity. Let me take off the settings that I just did by Kanui Control Z because I want to get that back over on here. There we go. There we go. We'll leave it here for now because um, I just want to get the functionality out so you can see how to actually build it. Um, so you have your canvas, you have your text that's here now. And then the next thing that we need to do is uh, add the actual script itself. And this is going to be probably the, one of the more more important parts. Now, if you um, have never used the uh, speech to text in anything in Unity, never fear because we have documentation on how to do it. So if you, um, Frank, if you could share the- I knew it was coming. <laughs> I know. It's called aka.ms slash unity speech to text. Yes. All right. So this particular tutorial is a really great start and it's actually what I used when I was learning how to use speech in Unity. Um, you can choose your programming language, of course. If you're using Unity, you will use C Sharp. But as you scroll down, um, make sure you select Unity as your target environment. And there's instructions for how to get started with everything with speech. Most important though is the script and this is what you'll need. Um, and that's what I'm using as well. And I'll walk you through that. So. With that, we just get raid. Mm -hmm. Another raid. Yay! So welcome raiders Yay! from Crazy Four Pi Three Fourteen. Hello everyone. Welcome. We're having fun welcome. building a French English learning in Unity uh, mixed reality. Yes. All right. So let's create a script for this. Oh, we need a button. I forgot that quick. Um, because we need a button so we can actually press a microphone. So let me create that by creating just an empty game object for that. And this essentially would hold all of our buttons. I would highly suggest uh, doing that. And then in here, we're going to add a circular button, which is what I used. Uh, there we go. See if I can find it really quick. There we are. And then add that to that. Oh, man. One second, I want to change something. All right, now let me drag that. Okay, so we can see that here in the game mode. Um, let me bring it down a little bit on the y-axis. And it looks small. I actually kept it small in the game that I did because I didn't want these massive buttons because I was trying to do a grid of all the flashcards. Um, if I want to make it bigger, there we are. And when you do this, make sure that box collider also gets adjusted. Um, that box collider is going to be important because that's how you can determine where you're actually pressing the button. If you don't modify that, you'll keep pressing buttons and wondering why it doesn't do anything. Um, and then by default, if you do change it, it'll probably ask you to fix the bounds as well. So you'll click those buttons, and fix that. That'll just adjust it properly to the uh, appropriate size. So we have this button now and we can, now that we have that, we'll leave it but we needed that in order to actually press for the microphone. Ah, one more thing I want to change, and that's to add a microphone icon. There we go. All right, 
So back to creating the script for the actual um, Azure component. So <laughs> we're almost using Azure, right? Almost. So here in assets, um, I'm gonna create a new folder called scripts and I'm gonna have that hold all of my scripts. And then in here, I'll right click, I'll click create and then C sharp script. This one's I'm gonna call speech and I'm gonna call it speech FR for French. And then Unity then um, creates that script. There's some code that's added to it by default, which we'll use um, once it's done. Once it has created it, we will open up Visual Studio and we'll do some coding to set that up. This part can sometimes take a moment, just give it a second, but once it's ready, you'll see here in the inspector, since I have it highlighted, what that script looks like. Um, that's what it by default gives you. Um, but once this loads and opens in Visual Studio, we'll be ready to start with some coding. Question so here, does, does, yeah. it work, does it work also with Visual Studio code or you need the big Visual Studio? You know? Visual Visual Studio, as far as I know, um, in the tools uh, documentation that we have, that is what we um, what we ask of you to use. That's one of the requirements. Um, I have not personally tried reconfiguring to make it use Visual Studio Code instead, so I, I um, can't speak to that too much. But Visual Studio is um, is is what you'll need if you are linking the two. Now. I do know that for other folks who might work in Unity and create and do scripting and such, Visual Studio isn't the only one that you can use. Um, you have more options, but if you're doing Windows Mixed Reality, you'll need Visual Studio. Well, I know it's really easy from Visual Studio. There's a, like a module you check when you install it and like you, mm -hmm. you got the Unity module. I was just curious, you know, if, if you could, because it's, uh, you know, code and maybe you can edit that maybe you cannot create the project but edit the file whatever yeah um i have it's never better. set I it think up it's, that it way will be better. But... the experience will definitely be better on visual studio id the big one ah uh, yeah i will say for me personally before getting started with any unity i never used visual studio i've always used visual studio code so this was definitely um a learning experience last year when i got started with this um, but now I feel like I feel better using it now, hundred percent, but you know, you can only hope for so much. <laughs> All right. So, um, we'll, we'll show you a uh, great teams and then you will fall in love with it. Okay, cool. And then, so, um, unity gives you three different, um, three different usings or libraries here, but there are some more that we need to add. Uh, the first is going to be, ah, I forgot to import something, Frank. Oh no. I'm sorry, everyone. I just realized. Let me make sure that I need to do it. Nobody said anything, so you're fine. <laughs> you should have just we pretend need... it was uh, on purpose. Shut up. We need the SDK. <laughs> oh yeah. We, 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 can't, we can't use it without it. So um, make sure you import that into your project. That's important. Um, let me click open there and import that. That is something you can also get from that documentation, the link that you just shared prior um, for how to create this in Unity. I hope this doesn't take long because usually it likes to lag. But in any case, um, okay, it's going. This is something you will need if you want to use this library. So you just import all of it. And extra worst case scenario, if it doesn't go fast, that's okay, because I have one that's already created and we can go with that one. Almost done, it's the going faster. The cooking show rules. <laughs> blah, Always blah, blah, help. Blah, 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 but I have one in the oven, so. Yeah. I always wonder what do they do with the, the, the all the steps in between where it's like halfway made meals and it's like, do you finish cooking them? Do you, do you just throw it away? I always wonder that. Yeah, yeah, like the, the one that you cook like for 10 minutes because they put it in the oven and then like, I don't know. Yeah, I have like the, 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 you know, the tech team around the, the those people doing the food. Like yeah. they must be starving because they smell oh, everything. Yeah. And like you see that food, and I'm like, can I have it? Can I have it? Yeah. 
I feel like that's that's how I would feel. All right, let's give us another minute and extra worst case scenario if this takes longer. I'll open up the other Unity project where we have it already. Because now we have about just yeah. a little bit less than 20 minutes. Alrighty. Yeah, time's fly. I know, but you're having fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> All right, know. so this is taking its time. Let me... I would say you're really impressing me. Like you go in there, like it's a, it's nothing like I'm I'm lost in all those uh, menus and, and things. You're just like, yeah, you go there, you go there, like... I can tell you I was also lost when I first started. All right, I think what I'll do is, uh, let me open the other Unity project where it's already created. And then what we can do instead is actually walk through that setup and that'll actually be much quicker. Oh, Unity froze on me. It's okay. Let's close that. And then I'll open the other one. I'm like almost afraid to click Control Alt Delete, and then <laughs> I mess up something in that process. But we might Worst have to do case, it. Worst case, I will call you back. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's try to shut down the Unity. There we go. Oh, it looks like it just finished as soon as I closed it too. That's okay. Course, were you about to say? I, I was just saying that's one nice thing with uh, Skype compared to Teams when you're using it to stream. Mm -hmm. Is if for some reason you lost the connection, yeah. Skype will rejoin automatically. Ah, that's good to know. Because yesterday uh, some people were asking why we're not using Teams mm -hmm. and we're using Skype. Uh, and like, I don't like, I, I don't know, that's one of the difference. I, I didn't even try like the, the, the instruction I had the like the walkthrough and setup yeah. was done with Skype. So I just follow and use Skype. Yeah. But uh, people were surprised we're not using Teams. And say, yeah, no, no, no. We, we use Teams just not to, to stream. Yeah, not, yes. not to stream. <laughs> yes, yeah, I'm sure it will come though. So. Yeah. So once this opens, um, what I'll do since I'll walk through the setup in the actual version that I demoed, because everything already there is as it should be. And we'll take a look at some code and I will also um, I will also walk you through different gotchas that I figured out along the way. And to the point that's in the chat, they need a high power GPU to get any project done. I will definitely say if you're working with anything with Unity, um, you you definitely need some power <laughs> with 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 uh with in terms of just your your um uh, with your computer and your specs you definitely need something that can um uh, withstand <laughs> all that unity does i when i was streaming um i was talking to you about this recently frank when i was streaming and doing unity my my laptop did not like it <laughs> yeah, no, uh, if my laptop <laughs> want to die with uh, and i have an i have a nice machine uh, yeah. If you want to die with just like Visual Studio and uh, the streaming tools, like yeah. running on top of that Unity, that is a, kind of a big monster. Yeah, of course, yeah. you need, you need it, a two PC it, setup. All right, it just opened. Let me drag it to the other screen for you all. And so uh, ISO, ISO stream. Uh, you cannot paste any URL, but if you uh, if you paste just like the the name you're you want we'll, we'll be able to to see it ah no problem like it's a rule in the but like you you don't get the bad point because of that it's just for safety urls are not allowed all right so you can see my lovely unity screen this is the actual game in all its glory once it's done and let me start by opening up the this one because I named them all crazy names <laughs> when I was building it as one does when they're trying to make sure something works. Um, we'll walk through that script where you can actually do the functionality. And once Visual Studio opens, 
I'll walk you through what that's like. All the other scripts that I have in here beyond the visual, beyond the um, the one used for Azure is what I use to control the score increasing, the time decrementing, um, switching between the scenes. But the one that matters most is the speech one that we're gonna open up and we're just waiting for Visual Studio to open it. There we go. As soon as I said it, it popped up. <laughs> Let's say, what, what is it? Like you said three times, like uh, the candy man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> visual It'll Studio, appear. Visual Studio, Visual Studio. Yep. And, and, and did you know, I... a lot of time when you say Docker three times mm -hmm. on uh, Twitch, mm -hmm. then rubber tables could show up. Oh, yeah, I can believe that. <laughs> I can 100% believe that. Do you know Robert Tables? I sure do. Uh -huh. He actually, when, my very first stream I ever did um, before actually joining Twitch, but I was streaming with, um, with Twilio at Signal, and he helped moderate that session. Uh -huh. See? Yeah. Oh, Visual yeah. Studio, what's going on? It was there. Studio. Yeah, it's there. But yeah, uh, you see it. Just thinking like, about it. On. Yeah. There we go. I was trying to. It's not responding. I was trying to get it over to my other screen really quick because I have something in it that I need to. Well, apparently not now uh, rubber table upgrade. It's not even just Docker now. You if you say containers. Oh, that that I didn't know. Uh, he showed up on my stream the other day. It was fun. And I think he was com not complaining, but it was... Uh, you know how like all your name has a different color? And... Whoa, did we lost you? Mm. The PC is working very hard. Okay, you're you're just slagging a lot. Probably your PC is Yay. working really hard. Okay, you're back. <laughs> okay. I was alone for a little while. <laughs> oh. So clearly, April PC is working really hard, thinking about Visual Studio and Unity and everything. Like she's looks like she's Talk here as public. Uh, oh, am I really lagging? Okay, I think now you're good. Am I? Yes. Okay. I'll, I will shut up. Just go. Okay. <laughs> All right. So there's a couple of variables that you want to create because you want to be able to um, modify these values over in the Unity editor. So you create these as public. Um, the first one is going to be that button that needs to be pressed for the microphone. The second is going to be whatever that output text is. So that output text is going to be what Azure sends back to us as the transcription of whatever was said. Um, the next one is going to be the flashcard itself. And then the next one down we have, you know, I can actually zoom in on here. Can I? Control plus or control shift plus. Yeah, uh, it's not letting me do that one. Or... No, I think it's all. Uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, or do you have, um, in the bottom, because I don't see it because of the picture, but in the bottom, do you see like a little zoom? In Visual Studio? Yes, where you see a uh, line seven or something like that, character 14. Is there a little plus over there? I don't. Uh, window, maybe I can zoom this in. I spent a lot of, the, of time in the, let, uh, no code, come on, open, open. But you know what? Because I know how to save the day. I already recreated this in Visual Studio code and I can zoom in on that screen. <laughs> So what I'll do is show the version in Visual Studio Code because I always have a good backup and I can actually zoom on there. I just hate when people show code and then it's like, I can't see a thing. So let me switch to Visual Studio. That's where I was keeping all my code notes. Here we are. All right. This looks better now, I believe. Oh yeah, it's nice. Okay, cool. So. 
this is hopefully better for everyone at home. Oh, I was lower <laughs> left. There's a per uh, person attention that drop down. I knew there's a, some mouse clicking possibility also in Visual Studio. Gotcha. All right, so we can see this better now. I'm gonna go through this in the seven minutes that <laughs> I have, um, but it's a short script, so it's not really long. Starting off, we, um, I actually forgot to mention this. There are some libraries that you need to ensure that you do include here. We have some usings. One is the Cognitive Services Speech. The other one is going to be TM Pro. And then um, also you need to ensure that you include the um, Mixed Reality Toolkit UI as well. So you'll make sure you have those added. And then the thing I was saying um, before I switched over here is that there are some um, some variables that you want to be able to modify through the Unity editor. And so those are created as public. We have a pressable button. That's going to be the button that you press to start the microphone. You assign the button uh, game object to that. We have the uh, output text. So that's going to be the text that comes back from Azure. And we have a object created for that, which is going to be a text object. We have the flashcard, and that's going to be that cube that we started creating. Um, you'll assign that. And then we have the string, which is um, the word. And so here, that's what you want the, um, the um, that's what that's what the word should be. And that's how we validate whether or not the person said whatever it was correct. So for example, if the card said house, and then in this word field, I put maison, then when Azure gives us back that string of me saying maison in French, it checks that that maison matches whatever this string is. And then that's how we validate. So that was my like cheap way <laughs> of doing the validation. And I can show you the uh, Unity editor in a second. Uh, the next one we have then is um, because I have scoring added in here, I referenced some other scripts that I created. And so this private one here is referencing that score script. So that's not needed for creating the Azure component here. Um, the next thing that we have, I'm not the best at explaining what's happening here with Threadlocker because that was something that was new to me. Again, I just started C Sharp late last year. So that's something that I would need to look up more of what that is. But essentially, I can tell you what's happening down in the methods, at least, where that is. Um, we also have a Boolean that's waiting to see if you're waiting for the recording. Um, we have the message that comes back from Azure. And then I have this bool once here as well. That's going to be used in the Unity um, update method to make sure that it's not um, telling the user every single frame that they got it right, because that would be like a really annoying the way that I had set up the um, to, to, to uh, debug what was happening. So down here, you need to ask the user for permission. And oh, so did you touch something with your son? No. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Just like you're you, you sound far away. Is it only me chat? Oh, I don't know. Let's continue, though, because we, we have not a lot. Like we can hear you. We, we just need to okay. booster. OK, now it's better. Alrighty. So um... in the matrix, the mattress. <laughs> so um, I also have something here, um, a bool to confirm whether the mic permission has been granted. So when you're creating experiences, you don't want to start off with automatically picking up the user's mic. Um, that's not a really great ethical way to build products or apps or such. You do need that permission. And so when you start the app up, it will ask for your permission if you can use your mic. And so assuming that permissions have been given, then you can actually use the mic in this experience. The first thing that we have here is the awake method. Now, this is going to be called when the script is first loaded. And this is what I use to when I reference the uh, the score script to increment the scoring. Down below, we have the button click. This actually comes from the documentation that I had Frank share a moment ago for how to create this. And so the first thing that we need to do is um, do the configuration. And so from here, you will need to insert your um, we well, need to create an Azure resource for uh, the, the the speech service, and you're going to insert the key as well as the region for here. And then below that, we have um, the speech recognizer that we're using. And when you set up that, when you set this up, this is where you can actually specify the language that um, that 
it should use for the speech transcription. By default, it does English. So keep that in mind if you go to use the um, if you go to use this particular service and you're wondering why you're speaking another language and it does all the transcriptions and it doesn't understand what you're saying. You need to specify the language itself. So in my case, it's French, and um, in our documentation, that's going to be fr fr. And then down below, um, it's waiting for the recording. And then as we keep going, um, once it's no longer waiting for the recording, that's when it actually does its, its whole Azure magic. And it'll send whatever you said up to Azure and then it'll come back. If it doesn't recognize what you said, then it'll give you this message that the speech cannot be recognized. If you cancel, then it's canceled. And then down here, whatever that new message was that came back from, or whatever that message was that came back from Azure, it becomes whatever new message is. And um, from there, we have our start method. And this start method is called before the first frame update in Unity. Unity gives you this when they create this template, if you will. And so um, this is checking whether uh, you actually added objects to those um, to those variables that we created that you can modify through the Unity editor. So that's super helpful. Our documentation, this is also used if you're doing for a platform for Android or iOS. So that's why this is here. I didn't remove it because I was afraid, but <laughs> in the event you're using either platform, that's there. And then as you go down, um, we have the update method. This is going to be called every single frame, which is a lot essentially. So what's happening down here is that it's looking for the output text and assuming that it's not null, then it's going to equal whatever, it's going to equal um, message. And then in here, this is where I confirm whether or not you said it correct. So if that output text is equal to whatever that word was that I set, and if once it's true, once it's con true is confirming that, um, that uh, this hasn't, this particular action hasn't occurred yet, then assuming you got it right, the cube itself will turn a color, which will be green. As you can see, um, I just highlighted here that the cube goes from blue to green. And then we have a method here where we're adding a score and that's going to be in like our score script. And then that once equals false so that way we don't keep getting that same setup over and over and over again. So that's the Azure script. Um, it's honestly not a lot. I mean, it's it's 159 lines, but keep in mind that we do have elements in here for different platforms. And so unless you're using Android or iOS, you can ignore those parts, um, but it's relatively, uh, relatively short. You can also do translation as well, whereas, um, I could say something in English and then it can translate that into French. The scripts are very similar, I would say. Um, there's not much to change there. But that's the beauty but, of the yeah. uh, cognitive services, right? You just yes. create an instance and then like it's just an API. It's a black box with mm -hmm. something smart in it and you just call yeah. it and in your case sending some, you know, voice and then receiving yeah. or text and like receiving if it, it's match. It's pretty cool. Yeah. So that's how I created what you see here. Um, everything else beyond that is just, as I mentioned before, there's scripts that's controlling what's happening in the game. I'm not sure how, if you, if you have a quick moment, I was just gonna play this just one quick round one more time for everyone at home if you missed the earlier demo of it. But um, I'm just gonna enter into play mode if it does it quick enough for me. And what I need to do essentially is say the correct word um, in, in French, so we'll do this now in Unity. Here's my little hand. We. Oui. Oh, I said it wrong. Oh, I'm in the wrong mode, Frank. <laughs> you must say it in I, English, what? Yeah, I gotta say it in English. I'm like, why is it translating to English? Yeah, so this one would right. be in English. Yeah. So oui all these words good. are in French. Yeah, my we oui was good, right? Your we oui was good. <laughs> So and your maison you know. is pretty good too. Yes. Thank you. I react um, when you said maison all year and people yes. catch that in the, in the chat, so that's fine. Oh. Uh, dog. Oops, it didn't pick it up. Dog. Push the button. There we go. Dog. Oh, I heard everything I said. <laughs> dog there we go so i won't play the whole thing but essentially as you can see this is a functionality that we just put together if you push the mic it waits for you to say something 
it comes back with a string. It validates whether or not it's correct. And then um, those different elements that I mentioned that you can modify through the Unity Editor. Here is, I put them on the canvas component. And this is what they look like. Let me collapse this so we can get just a better view. Here they are. So you would just drag and drop those elements to those boxes and that'll associate it with it. The good news is, is that um, for those of you who want to recreate this, I've had some people reach out just from seeing me talk about it on Twitter to try it out. Um, I plan to set time aside next week to actually do a full write up of how to go about doing this and putting it in my GitHub repo so that you can try this out on your own at home um, and do whatever it is you want to do with, um, with this. So by all means, take it and run with it. I try to create these projects as something that's hopefully um, approachable for beginners um, with as limited scripting as possible. This has probably been the most custom scripts I've ever done in any project. So I try to try to help out for, for those who um, are getting started with Mixed Reality and MRTK and now Azure. So yeah, that's the project, Frank. How did I do? <laughs> it was, it's awesome. It's awesome. And yes, I will let her answer, but uh, you have your own Twitch channel, right? Yes, I do. Um, it's also at Bogan Code. And good news is that, what is it, July 7th? Um, as we head towards the end of this month, I'll be um, coming back to doing that, um, my, my streams on there. I primarily just focus on mixed reality and doing stuff in Unity as we saw today um, and just walking through everything step by step. So definitely subscribe on there. Um, if you follow me on Twitter, that's usually where I announce when I am going live. So towards the end of, towards the end of July, early August, I'll be back on Twitch and I'll be sharing all um, Mixed Reality and MRTK. And, and you're coming back also two other times, at least that we are, yes. that are planned. So folks, yes. go in the, the schedule down below. There's a section schedule where you will see the calendar and April is scheduled there twice. So we yes. know she will come back with more great stuff. Yes, I, I will be back. <laughs> it was awesome. Super. Very packed of information. I kind of knew it, but uh, that was <laughs> awesome. Yes, yes. Thank you very Super much. Cool. It's uh, like, yeah, really, really good. Your French is excellent. For the thank few you. words I picked, at least. Oh, uh, yes. Thank you. I will say probably Maison is actually like good because in, in fashion, all of the houses uh, like, cause all like the designer brands, oh, yeah, their La houses. La Maison. Yeah. yeah. And that's probably why <laughs> I'm good at that one since I have my fashion background, but, uh, but yeah, thank you. Duolingo like makes me practice every single day. So, uh, I'll really offer in the, on, on Twitter. So I will do it on Twitch. Anytime you want to chit chat in French. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> I'm a Once click I'm away. ready, I'm still scared. <laughs> Boy, don't, don't you think I'm scared to speak in English? <laughs> I was scared for a long time. Oh, no, your English is, is really good, though. I, I, I think it's good. I think it's good. Well, thank you a lot for being with us today. It was very interesting. I think people were very happy, very, uh, very different than, you know, like just seeing code and stuff. So it's definitely interesting to have that dimension and see mm -hmm. that Yes, the UI is really impressive, but there's good documentation where we can follow and get our setup. Uh, mm -hmm. And like if eventually you have your GitHub repo and we we can start yeah. with that thing, it will be awesome. Yes. Tomorrow, same time, same channel, will be Cecile and Brian Clark's learning Python. So oh, people I like. That's, <laughs> That's interesting. I know somewhere earlier in the chat was mentioning Python. And on Friday, it's uh, Jason who will, will be hosting and the, go, uh, the, the guest is uh, Brian Benz. And the topic is where to start when you don't know, what was it again? Like the, it's like <laughs> how to start coding when you don't know where to start, something like that. Yeah. Oh, I love that topic. It's pretty cool. Like when you know when you have an ideas, but you don't know where to get started. You want to code. Like should you whiteboard or like which language? Like where where to start? So that's the yeah. topic. 
So uh, that will be also very interesting. I'm looking forward to that one. And after that, anything you want to ask or not ask, but uh, say April, maybe do you have an... So I will put all the links you share with me in the show notes. So on Twitch, mm-hmm. they will be in the Twitch description. On yeah. YouTube, they will be down below. Anything okay, else? Cool. Yeah, I would just say uh, two things. One, if you are interested in learning more about mixed reality with Microsoft, there is um, there's a whole team beyond our um, cloud advocacy our cloud advocacy team that is a mixed reality team. They host meetups and they um, often share when such meetups are happening. I just did one recently with them. Uh, Follow their account on Twitter, which I believe is um, mixed reality dev, hopefully, or MR dev, I I forget. It's one of the two, but um, I should look that up because now I feel bad. But I would say if you're just interested to learn more about what you can do with um, with just Windows Mixed Reality. I would say check them out, follow their account so you know what's happening. And then the second thing is, oh, it's MXD Reality Dev. That's M- how they're. Uh, M- M- X- yep. D. D. D as in dog, yep. Yeah, re- uh, Reality. Dev. Yep, follow that account. Um, if you just want to be able to attend events and such. Um, And then the second last thing that I would say is if you're getting started with mixed reality, you're brand new, you don't know what to do. That is a okay. That's where I was last summer. And um, I feel like I've gotten better. I might not be the smartest (laughs) and it's always learning process, but have a lot of patience. I would say Um, it takes a lot of patience and you'll, you'll get there. um, Definitely. So that was the last two things that I had to say. Excellent. With that, I will say to everyone, thank you for being with us this afternoon or today. It was a pleasure. We had a lot of fun. And I will say, see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye.